So uh, things have not been going well for the United States and the Middle East over the last 15 years. Uh, and you could argue uh, that we have been doing it wrong. And yet, when there have been major strategic shifts on American policy in the Middle East proposed by or discussed by this president, the reaction is such that you would believe that there is a reason to defend the status quo. The, the reaction suggests that as long as we stay the course with respect to our strategy, with our relationships with named friends and named enemies, that everything will just self-correct. And of course, the president's uh, nuclear agreement with Iran is at the top of the list uh, of strategic shifts that have you know, caused great revulsion from uh, those who apparently see benefit in the status quo continuum. My thesis that um, I've been um, presenting over the course, certainly with intensity of the last month or so, is that one of the underlying foundations of American policy in the Middle East are um, resolute partnership and alliance with the Saudis is one of those policies that needs to be revisited as we seek to try to reshape our interests in the region. Now, at the outset, there's no question, as you said, that this is an important alliance that has you know, accrued to the benefit of the United States in many ways. Certainly, we're cooperating in uh, very important ways on counterterrorism missions uh, throughout the region, throughout the world. Certainly, the Saudis have been a coolant on many of the great animosities towards Israel to the extent that there is a relative detente between the Sunni Middle East and Israel. Saudi Arabia has a lot to do uh, with that. Clearly, there's a longstanding energy relationship there that maybe isn't as impactful today as it was 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, but it's still important. And Saudis are important to the global economy and to the U.S. economy. But I think as time goes on, it's harder and harder to ignore the holes in the relationship. Um, one of the biggest, and we've known about it for a very long time, is the uh, Saudi family's support for uh, the Wahhabi movement, which continues to this day to fund and export a rather intolerant brand of Islam that uh, often forms the foundation, the building blocks for the very extremist movements that uh, we say is our top priority to fight in the region. We received testimony in the Foreign Relations Committee just last week that um, the uh, recruiting materials of many of the named extremist groups that we're finding are literally often carbon copies of Wahhabi texts and Wahhabi textbooks. Now, we've raised this issue over and over again, but it seems as if uh, given our lack of success in trying to tamp down on the recruitment of young men into these extremist organizations, that this conversation should be elevated in the context of our relationship with Saudi Arabia.